do you talk about build, or you talk about building relationships a lot at work, even when people whom you might not like, even with people whom you, you don't like? Have you always been this way, or did you also feel difficult? Also Maybe feel difficulty. difficulty in wanting to build relationships with those people. If the latter, what are the things that help you to actually want to build relationships with them? Thanks. So, when I was a young seal, I was pretty typical young seal, pretty typical young man. Sure. Meaning, I thought I was invincible. I thought I could beat everyone in a fight because. <laughs> I didn't know jujitsu, so you just think you're just gonna win, but that you're wrong. <laughs> I thought I knew everything, of course. Mm. And I thought I was smarter than everyone else. Kind of typical. Sometimes I would rub people the wrong way. And the people that I would rub the wrong way were especially people that I th- thought were not squared away in the chain of command. So if you weren't square if you if you were my boss and I didn't think you were squared away, yeah. I was gonna rub you the wrong way. Because no. I was going to be slightly offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I got an evaluation. It's one of the first evaluations that I got when I got to a SEAL team. Mm-hmm. And back in the day, yeah, you'd get, you were rated 4.0 was the highest you could get. And it would go all the way down to whatever, like one. Mm. But at this time, basically everyone got 4.0 and everything, right? Mm. You basically got 4.0 and everything. Yeah, yeah. And like you'd have to mess up. You'd have to mess to, up. To get deviate from the 4.0. So. I got all four O's and I got a 3.8, which was like a major <laughs> dig. Sure. And the dig was in, I think it was like in relation, like I, I don't know what the word was, but when I got debriefed on it, what the guy that gave me the 3.8, what he what he told me, <laughs> which I actually was proud of because that's how stupid I was. <laughs> He's like, sure. you, you're, you're too hostile with people that aren't squared away. That's literally what Dang, he told me. You figured it out. And I was all like, whatever. <laughs> You're damn right <laughs> damn I am hostile towards people that aren't squared away. I'm here to go to war. Yeah. Right? Just mm-hmm. an idiot. That's what that's what the situation was. And you know, it made me mad if a leader was weak and I would form these antagonistic relationships with leaders if I thought that they were weak. Mm-hmm. And one of these bosses eventually that I thought I was better than mm-hmm. Right, I thought I was smarter I Thought I was smarter than him, right? I thought that he was an idiot sure. I Should have his job right how often do you think that right? Mm-hmm. I should have that guy's job I'm better yeah, than them. Yeah. I'm smarter than them yeah, yeah. and the more I showed this attitude the worse our relationship got and the and the less he listened to me and the less influence I had over how we did things Mm -hmm. and therefore the the worse we did and the and the the worse our ability to perform got because he was just doing things the way he thought without any good input from anyone below him in the chain of command Mm. all because I had formed this antagonistic relationship with him which was bad Mm. because then he's not listening to me and then one day one day I said to myself if I'm so smart if I'm such a smart guy why am I losing (laughs) why am I losing if I'm so smart if I am so smart why can't I get this guy to do what I want him to do even though he's my boss doesn't matter if I'm so smart, yeah, smart and I'm than so him. much smarter than him, mm-hmm. why can't I get him to do what I want him to do? Hmm. Why? If I'm so smart, how come I can't have more influence over the way we operate? If I'm so smart and he's so dumb. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's when I realized. That's when I had an awakening. <laughs> an awakening that instead of blaming him for being stupid, I was the one who was being stupid. I had lost the ability to influence my boss because I was being stupid and because of my ego. I, I literally thought I deserved his job. I mean, I thought pretty much anyone should, anyone in the platoon should have his job. <laughs> and therefore, since I thought that, I, inst- I undermined him. 
instead of supporting him, instead of building a relationship with him, I undermined him. Now, once I got humble and I started to build a positive relationship with him instead of an antagonistic one, that started to change. And because, because then he started listening to me. He started to change some things. And my influence over the whole situation became better because I now had a relationship with him. Despite the fact that I didn't really like the guy. Despite that fact, I built the relationship and the situation got better. I had more influence. And that became kind of my standard operating procedure was to build relationships with people. Even if I didn't like them, to build relationships with people so that I could have more influence. Now, does what does that sound like? Right? That sounds like I'm kind of this manipulative, yeah, yeah. two-faced, superficial, disingenuous guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's being devious and conniving. Not keeping it real. Not keeping it real, right? But the fact is, that is not true. That's not that's not that's not who I am. You wanna know who I am? I'm a guy that's trying to accomplish the mission. That's what I am. I'm a guy that is trying to accomplish the mission who is putting my own ego in check to build a relationship with someone that I don't like, that I don't respect, but what I'm trying to do is improve our operational capability. That's what's more important to me. Trying to arrange the situation build the relationship so that we do better not so that I get promoted not so that I'm getting some accolades but so that we as a team do a better job put the little feelings aside because I want the team to win so if you're having having some trouble getting over your feelings and getting over your ego to build relationships for the good of the team, ask yourself the same question I asked myself a long time ago, which is this. If I am so smart, why am I not winning? And if you answer that question honestly, then you'll put your ego in check, you'll go build the relationships that will make you and your team accomplish the mission and win. Hmm. There you go. Can't help but agree with that one. <laughs> you know what? You know what's funny is we think about like why you wouldn't like someone. Mm-hmm. What what causes you to not like someone? Most of the time, that's your ego, anyways. Yeah. Most of the time, that's your ego, anyways. Yeah, and, and so you know, you you had that story of the, 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 you know, you were consulting somebody mm-hmm. who's like a big CEO of a yeah, company, yeah, yeah. So like a lacrosse guy. That story is f- probably the most common story. I mean, the way you handle it, different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that yeah. scenario that you started with, with that story, so common, man, where, yeah, they rub you the wrong way because right off the bat, you see them as some kind of competitive figure yep. to you. Like yep. they're, you know, some, you know, comp- you know you're c- competing with them in your own mind in whatever. And the feeling's probably mutual a lot of the time, you know, so you guys don't like each other. You know, one, anything he says, you're, you know, yep. you're already defensive. But it's weird, man, how you can... How that happened, like that's happened to me before. Mm-hmm. Not as, it wasn't as overt, but just like, yeah, I don't really feel that guy. You know, yeah. I don't like, I would, because I, not only is he like, when you look at him or whatever, they're kind of competitive with you, but maybe they do something just this much different than you, mm-hmm. you know, like a, just different in philosophy or something like that. So it's like, oh, I'm against that guy. And then they open their mouth and say one word to you and it's real nice. You're like, oh, I love that guy. You know, just one little thing, just one little like, hey, I'm cool. You know, I like you kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man. Yeah, when they say something humble to you, yeah. it, it disarms your ego and you're all of a sudden you're bros. Yeah, it's so weird how that is. But if they don't, if they escalate the ego situation, yeah, which then it's very problematic. It happens all the time happens too, man. happens all the time. I mean, th- really, that's the natural course of things because you do have to put on the brakes on your feelings and be like, okay, let's make a different kind of decision than the automatic one. I got to switch to manual real yeah. quick and then boom. But, but the bottom line is you're going to interact with all kinds of different people. If you're in any kind of team whatsoever, which is most most human beings interact with other human beings yeah. it, through their job, through their life. through. I mean, you could apply this to your family too, right? Yeah. There's someone in your family that you don't get along with. Mm. Well, what good does it do? Does it make your family unit better when you let those emotions play out and let your ego play out? No, it doesn't. You're better off. You'll get further and you'll have a better 
you'll have a better life in your family if you put your ego in check and mm-hmm. say, you know what, I'm just going to build a relationship with this person. It's going to make everything better and smoother. But it's like, man, if you, it, I feel like you can take the place of any marriage counselor by just saying that <laughs> for real. Like all you got to do, is, and and they got to do it, but all you got to do is ask, like, is this going to help the relationship with my wife or my family or whoever yep. it is in your? Is this going to help the relationship if I do this or don't do this, or is it going to hurt it? And that's a that's it. That's super general question or whatever, but it's it's so cut and dry most of the time. Yeah, of course there's exceptions, but generally speaking, it's pretty cut and dry. And you're like, okay. It and is. a lot of times, just like I said, it has to do with like your ego or mm-hmm. your, you know, this this sense of vengeance, little micro sense of vengeance because sure. I can't believe she doesn't respect the fact that I took out the trash, you know? She asks me to take the trash all the time. Finally, when I do it, nothing, you know? Like, so it's just that. I was talking to a, a friend of mine and we were talking about, you, you know how I've talked about the mutiny that I had yeah, in, yeah, a, yeah. in a pl- seal platoon? But we had a mutiny. We fired. We had a mutiny against uh, our platoon commander. We fired. He, he got fired, and then the, the other guy that came in to take his place was like the best guy. Mm. And I was talking to a guy that worked with him much later when he was a senior, senior guy. And I was telling him, I was like, "Oh, when I talk on the podcast about the platoon commander that was like the best, that's who I'm talking." He's like, "No way!" And and th- this guy worked with me. He was a senior guy. And he says, you know, when he when I worked with him, he would take out his, he would take out the trash from the office every day, mm. and he, and I started laughing. I'm like, that's <laughs> it, that's right. Mm. And I'd be look, and he was saying like, oh, I'd look at him and be like, sir, you know, you don't need to do that. He's like, no, 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 it's all good. You know, somebody's got to take out the trash. I got it. Mm-hmm. This is a seat, a guy that shouldn't have been taking out trash for twenty five years, yeah. taking out the trash. Was he picking up brass? Picking up brass, taking out <laughs> trash. You know, that's that's being humble. Yeah, being humble goes a long way. 